In this episode, Justin goes on a night dive at one of his favorite sites, Wild Reef, where he runs into some crazy looking critters that he's never filmed before. You aren't going to want to miss this episode. Thank you for joining the dive today. You are watching Critter Hunter. Just got back from Pira Vida and I met up with a guy there for coffee that wanted to interview me. His name's Bud Brown and he's like an OG expat of Philippines. He's got a little channel like mine. It's called Bud Brown, I think. And he just gives expat advice and visa information. Pretty cool guy. Now I'm home. Gotta do a bunch of editing. Edit the next episode. Uh, then I got an interview with an editor. And, and I need a haircut. It's too much to do, Judea. No, you know. Hello, Kevin. Let me see your pretty necklace. Oh, you're so proud. You're such a buddy. I think today is a uh, blackberry and strawberry day. And raspberries. I don't know. Can you have too many fruits? I'm trying to get my immune system back up as well as eat healthy because I had bronchitis and whatever. Where's the honey? Here's some honey. Get out of here. Honey. Uh, oh, that's heavy. Filipino. That was a close one. Instead of this black coffee, I almost used this little pepper. Black pepper. It's like the same package. I thought they were both coffee. That, that would have tasted a little different. It's scuba diving time. Are you sad because I moved my dive bag? It's not comfortable now. Ow! Ah! Apparently, for unknown reasons, I need a haircut. That's what I'm told, so that's what we're gonna go do. I need a haircut before we uh, go diving. Tell 
How much a haircut? How much a haircut? 40 pesos. 40 pesos. 40 pesos. What about a shave? One peso. <laughs> with shave. 40 with the shave? So yeah, if you're not very particular in a professional looking haircut, you just don't care like me, uh, you just want a quick one, you can find those all over Philippines. And you just have to ask for no baby powder because everywhere I go in Asia, they want to put like baby powder on your head and neck and everywhere. And I hate it, unless you like that kind of thing, but that's the only thing I hate. But like I said, it's only 40 pesos there where I go in Dowin, including the straight razor. That's nothing, that's not even one dollar. So, my advice to you guys moving here or even just visiting, tip, tip good on something like that. You know, especially when you have a place that you're a regular, you go there all the time. Uh, you know, they see you come in, they let you at the head of the line, they take care of you, give you the good chair. Uh, you know, they know, they know you by name. You're not just another foreigner. And believe me, foreigners get bad name here. They, they're really cheap. They don't tip or they don't, you know, they treat the locals like a servant almost. But at all the places, especially that we're a local or a regular, we tip good, we make friends, we ask names, we make contacts. I'm always making new contacts. So if I need a taxi, I have a phone number. He knows that I'll give him a tip or or whatever and he'll be there he'll drop whatever he's doing he'll come get us or the restaurants they know me by name you know I know it's a small town but it's also you know places that we go to the most quite frequently I should get more haircuts not just once a month but I hate getting hurt it feels awesome afterwards but I hate especially in Philippines you're all sweaty I hate like getting all those little hairs everywhere but it feels good after so yeah that's another thing I love about Dowin you can show up at the haircut place the restaurant the anywhere in town go to the mayor's office ATM anything you want and your dive dive clothes dive suit wetsuit and nobody nobody uh, nobody's surprised nobody cares I love that can you imagine doing that in like uh, New York City? They think you're crazy. But here it's a small community of divers. Uh, everybody's a diver. They go dive, they go to the restaurant in between dives. They're used to it, you know? So, yeah, I love I love Dallin, such a small little town. And uh, now we're going to meet Alex. Uh, He's getting the tanks, and we're going diving at Wild Reef again. Gitan and Fanella and Finn, everybody is uh, busy, so it's just us. But I think, I think we have a friend slash uh, subscriber joining us today as well. So maybe, maybe not just me and Alex. But this is good a place as you can get for practicing underwater photography. So. Uh, so many of you guys have questions about my video setup and how to do the settings. It's really confusing, so I think, let me know in the comments if you want me to make like a TG6 tutorial for underwater video. And if I get good enough, maybe underwater photos. So we're almost there. I went a little bit early so that we can film during the day. 
You know, when me and Finn were going every night, I would not even think about it. We'd just show up, show up, show up. And it'd be too dark to film anything above water. So you guys don't really know where we're at. I tell you, I show you the map, but today I'll go a little bit early. Even though if you've been watching a while, you know exactly where Wild Reef is because I go there so often. It's just so good. Oh, and that, that reminds me, this is our last dive here for the week, for a while, for a couple weeks. Uh, in a couple days, we're going to Cebu uh, to fly out to Porta Galera. We're gonna, we got invited by a dive resort called Scandi Divers, and we're going to go dive with them for a week, 10 days, whatever it is, and they want us to, they want us to check out Porta Galera, the resort, all that so we're working with them they're sponsoring us and it should be good because I've been to a lot of locations in Philippines but not Porta Galera for some reason every time I'm in that little area I always went to Anilao and we have a invite to Anilao as well I just didn't want to do it on the same trip because it's the same area so our next video should be pretty cool it'll be our first flight in like two years probably yeah Man, I used to average like 175 flights a year, and now I haven't had one flight for like two and a half years. It's gonna be crazy. Peaceful down here though. Fixing this place up. A lot of those little places are for rent. Oh man, it's locked. I gotta get the key. Whoa, really high tide today. Well, I guess I can't show you the beach again. It was high tide uh, last time I was here. Uh, but you guys have seen it. Not bad waves. Perfect entry. I'm on the wrong side of the island for the sunset, but it's nice. I don't know if you got to see the rope swing on that tree. Yeah, that's for skinny Filipino kids. Not me. By the way, the other day I said 26 was the coldest I've seen in the water, but last night it was 25 Celsius. It's pretty cold for the Philippines. I feel sorry for Alex, you know. I'm sure he'd prefer to be doing day dives when it's nice and warm. But we got him a, 
one of my subscribers got him a big old wetsuit long sleeve like nice wetsuit so <laughs> it's not as cold but uh <laughs> he's shivering at the end of the dive i wonder what dive sites are down there i always get there by car not by beach not sure This is the life. There's Apple Island. And there's Seeky Horror. I don't think you guys can see it in the video, but it's hard to see it. Oh, you, no, that's clouds. So right there would be Mindanao. Good time. Maybe I'll walk down this way. So down this way is uh, Wells Beach. Well, Well Beach. Wells Beach Resort. Nice, nice restaurant. I never dove with them, but they got a nice restaurant and pool, I think. So here's a little tiny cabana right at the beach. He said they get families here that put mattresses on the floor, save money. It's got an AC. It's right on the beach. <laughs> Not a bad spot if you're a diver. I'm telling you. You guys want to come here? We could. Now the borders are open. Maybe we should organize a group trip. Let's talk about that later. You guys know that this is a pleurobrank, which is related to a nudie, and they're massive. They're also all over at this dive site. I see them almost every night, sometimes multiple ones together. This particular one's about the size of a dinner plate, and he's really colorful. These guys are pretty cool looking. And then I looked up, and there was a Circe nudie prank flying in the air. I don't know if the current kicked him up or what happened, but he was just floating down back to the sand. And I've never seen this view where I could see his whole body, but eventually he landed back down on some coral and I could film him a little bit. These guys are kind of my nemesis. They're really hard for me to get a photo or a video because they're so transparent and everything. But I remember when I first got to Dowan, I really wanted to see one of these Cersei Ludi break. And then of course, here's a Ludi break that you see quite often, no matter what dive site you're at in Philippines. This guy was just eating on this tuna kit and these are pretty common, like I said, but always up for a good filling. Unlike the Circe, they're not too difficult to film. Then of course, <laughs> these guys are everywhere. These are skeleton shrimp. And if you've watched the channel anytime, you've probably seen these guys at some point. This one has tons of little babies hanging on its back. I almost feel sorry for it. That doesn't look like a fun time. These skeleton shrimp, they come in waves. So sometimes there's not a lot, and other times they're everywhere. But you have to really look close. They're so, so tiny. Less than maybe a half a centimeter tall. But they're so skinny and almost transparent that they can be hard to see. I've also seen baby frogfish eating these guys. It's like a buffet. There's so many of them around. And as you can see, they must have a lot of babies. And of course, if you can't find anything to film, there is always a leaf sheep in Dowin. Now, Well Reef is technically in Zambuquita, which is just past Dowin, but 
either way, the entire coastline, you always look at leaves poking up in the sand, and there's usually some species of leaf sheep living on it, like this guy. Now, these are the most common species of leaf sheep, and sometimes we call them Sean the Sheep, you know, after that cartoon. But either way, they're always up for a good photo or video. And there's so many of them, you can always count on them to be around somewhere. I don't know why I filmed this. It just looked kind of cool. And you can see out in the background what a muck dive looks like. Not a lot of coral. Here's another type of nudibranch or sea slug. I believe this one is an Alicia species, but some of us like to just call them cabbage species for, you know, obvious reasons. These guys are always colorful, and it's not something you see every day. In fact, when we used to explore down in Chateau area, these guys were a lot more plentiful for whatever reason. I've seen this particular Alicia species in a few different colors, and this green is probably the most common. And they get rather big, uh, I'd say three to four inches long sometimes is the biggest I've seen. But of course, they start out as babies and they're real tiny. This particular one is two or three inches long. Not too difficult to film. I'm just trying to get different angles. I like that white and transparent head and then it has a bunch of polka dots and kind of fades into green. It's a really colorful nudie break. I can pretty much watch these all day and I don't want to get bogged down filming one critter on an entire dive and miss out on everything else. And of course, Alex is always calling me over where he found some other critter, so Eventually, I have to move on. Now, I see this weird snail. I have no idea what kind. I don't think it's a cone snail, but he was just sitting there in the sand. And when I look closely, he had a big old mouth sticking out. It's not something I usually see. Usually, they're hiding in their shell, especially when I get close or turn on the lights. Well, this guy must have been eating something under the sand that I couldn't see. Maybe you guys can tell me if you know what he's doing. But since he was out of his shell and not really minding me, I got a close-up of his eye and his face and his little antenna. This dude was a little bit freaking creepy. I really wanted to flip him over or maybe ask him what he was doing, but I didn't want to be rude. Here's a very, very common shrimp that I usually take for granted and kind of ignore. It's a banded coral shrimp and you can pretty much see it everywhere. This is a little bit more rare. It's some kind of crab, I'm not sure what kind, and he's hanging on to a sea pin. And this nudibranch is a eubranchus species and very cool. He is living on the side of a stinging hydroid, which are already really tiny. So you can imagine how small this weird nudibranch is. If I had to measure it, I'd say he's about 10 millimeters long, which is really tiny. I don't know how Alex finds these things. I'm sure he checks all the little stinging hydroids, but they're really hard to find and really hard to film, especially when it's flapping in the wind. Well, you know, waves, water, whatever. I'm trying to get a close up, but of course when I'm filming at night, the light attracts all the plankton and krill. So they get in the way and they start attacking whatever I'm filming. So this little guy is just kind of slithering around on his hydroid trying to escape. So I can't film him for too long. I don't want to bother him, but it's a really awesome species. Then, at the end of the dive, I ran into this little tiny frogfish. This guy is so cute, but there's kind of a current today. It wasn't the easiest thing to film. 
is tiny and orange, probably the most common species of frogfish here in Dallin, but an awesome find. So thank you guys so much for watching.